I plan on using the analog to digital converter from time to time, and I also want to add code to it as well from time to time. So I want to make a, a header file like I did with the LCD functions and make it so we can quickly um, initialize the ADC and then start grabbing data from whatever channel that we, we desire. So let's create a, a new header file and make some convenient functions for us to use. For now, I'm going to actually um, eliminate the temperature portion of it because I don't see me using the temperature within the microcontroller for any application, but it's available on, um, on video, so you can use it whenever you want to. So I'm going to actually take out any reference to those um, parts. So let's create a header file. Let's see. Let's make a new file, and we'll call it adc.h. Actually, I don't want to put the .h there. I'm going to use it here. Select it this way, and then we'll save it. I think it saved it under my timers workspace. Let me see. Let's just go new file. Yeah, look at that. I don't want it under the timers and counters. I want it under... I'm going to do this the manual way because... Or I could actually delete it. Let me do that. I'm going to delete it here. It's a little bit easier. Okay. And I'm going to go to new file. And I'm going to change the workspace to ADC tutorial. So I'll know that that's going to be the main place for the the header file. I'll go to the app because that's where all the files are. .h and adc. Save. All right, we want to do the same thing that we did in the LCD functions, where we create a. Um, we pretty much state that we this is the LCD functions header. This is the ADC header. So I'm just going to copy and paste that. We don't need the STDIO on the ADC, so we're going to re release or remove that. And I think it's end if. Yeah, end if. Okay, so all of the code that I want to put in here, that's going to be called ADC functions header, ADC. All the code will be, will reside between the define and the end if. And the next time it tries to open up this header file, if it's already been defined, it won't run any of this again. All right, so let's start copying stuff in here. We'll start with the calibration. I could probably take all of it and do it one time, but I think it's just a little bit easier to, to do it one at a time, just to make sure that I might want to put them into separate functions, I might not. So let's see, I'm going to start out with, um, I'm going to peek over at the LCD functions just to see what I'm doing here. All right. I don't think I need to return anything. I'll call this ADC initialize. And I'm not passing anything in, I don't think yet. So we're calibrating. Now I'm going to put everything in the initialize. And then if I need to separate it out, I can, I can just take something out and make like ADC calibration or whatever. So it looks like we are pretty good here. We're doing just, just making sure that it's calibrated. So let's keep that the way it is. All right. I'm going to go ahead and put in ADC initialize. Well, we have to include it first. There we go. And I'm going to put in ADC initialize. I think I have to save it first. I like it to be able to come up and tell me what I need to type. There we go. Okay. So we're initializing. We know that the calibration is already in here. So we'll, if I ran it from this point, it would probably work. So let's go ahead and take in the clock, selecting the clock. We'll paste it in here. I'm cutting and pasting. So select a clock source. Let's see if there's anything in here that we need to modify or make as a selection for an input parameter. 
and it doesn't look like it, so I'm going to save that. Now the ADC enable, cut, paste. All right, so we are just enabling it here and we're making sure that it's ready. All right, that seems to be pretty easy. Now this one is different. We This may change the sample rates and the the channel select. So this is very important here. So we might want to put that into a separate function. Okay, so let's go ahead and I think I might want to put the sample rates and the, and the channel select in the same function. So let's go ahead and I'm going to cut this. And we don't, I don't think I'm going to be out, um, outputting anything from here. So it can be void. And Let's see, ADC channel select and sample rate. Maybe I want to separate those two out, but let's do this first. And I'm not sure what I need to input as, a, as the channel select yet. So let's take a look. Well, let me go ahead and put the code in here. The channel select is going to be just a simple number, obviously. And we can see that it's an unsigned integer of 32 bits. So we can go ahead and just put that in here. U I N T 32, U I N T 32 T. Um, and we'll call that channel. And then all we would have to do is put in this. So let's go ahead and, you know what? I want to do this first. I want to copy this because make it a little bit smoother for me and error, less error prone. I'm going to actually put in the channel that I have here. I'm going to cut it because I don't want that in there anymore. I'm going to paste it here, end it with a sem semicolon. So I'm just going to replace this with channel. On second thought, you know, I would like to just say channel one or channel two or channel three. So let's look at the differences between the channels and see what main differences these are. So let's look at, let's make a few of these. Channel two, channel three. I don't know how many channels there are actually. Let me see. Let me do this here. There we go. So it looks like we have 18 channel select. Here we go. Looks like we have 18 of them. And we know one of them is voltage and one of them is temperature. But we'll go ahead and allow it for, for the 18. So let's we'll start with zero. That's going to be, no, it's not, not going to be syntax here. So that's good. I'm doing it this way because I want to look at an alternative way to going to the data sheet. We don't really need to go to the data sheet if we have these variables or defines macros here. So you can see it's 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 upping it by one. So you got one, two, four, which is the bit next to it, eight, ten. So all we're doing is we're shifting the bit. Twenty, forty and 80. So all we're doing is we're moving the bit over one. So that's, that's pretty simple to do. And this is just using the, the left shift. So if we take a look at the hexadecimal number one and two, four, eight, let's go ahead and uh, do a conversion from hex to, to binary. And you'll see how the one is shifted from one to the next. So zero X one should be in the ones place. And then if you do two, it's in the next place. You can see how it moves four, which was the next one. It's just moving to the left eight. There you go. So all we're doing is with, with a particular channel, this would be channel zero. This would be channel one. This would be channel two, 
channel three. And all we're doing is we're doing a left shift operation. So that's pretty easy to do, obviously. We know that. So in the channels, for the channel select, let's just go ahead and put in a very simple U I U I N T. Is there an eight here? Let's see. Okay, so there was a fast eight. I'll try it out. What the heck? Okay, so well, if we put in channel zero, then we'll, we should expect channel zero. So we'll make that the UINT fast eight, which are whatever that is. I've never heard of that. But we're going to put the channel in there, and this is going to change because we want the one, and we want a left shift channel. But when channel is zero, we have to say channel plus one. Actually, no, we want to keep it zero because we want it in the zeroth place. So let's keep it that way. To keep this video simple and to ease your way into ADC and the more complexities of ADC, I'm going to keep the sample rate the way it is. I believe I'm using the slowest sample rate. So I'm going to put this into the initialization area because we're probably not going to be changing this very often. And we'll, um, only when we really want the, the uh, microcontroller to, to work in an extremely efficient manner, we don't really need to work with it right now. Uh, and the sample rate is going to be determined by uh, a lot of different factors anyway. And that would be circuit factors, not necessarily programming factors. Um, and having the knowledge of the circuitry of the ADC that's going into the ADC pin, um, resistance and things like that, uh, these sample rates may be able to change, but let's keep this simple and we can scaffold the way into the future. So let's keep it this way first. So this one really is the only thing we're going to be messing with is the sample is the um, channel, channel select. Let's see, let's make channel select. And you know, this UINT fast 8T might actually, I'm gonna, I'm not sure if I should keep it or not. If I just use a standard int, um, it might actually make it a little easier to know what to put in when you're actually putting in the function or using the function. So let's, Let's see what it says when I try to put something in here. Yeah, you can see it says UINT fast eight channel and it's that gets a little bit confusing. And then you can see that it's expecting some variable or some number of UINT fast eight T, which I don't, I don't think I've ever used myself and it'll be interesting to see what happens when I use it. I'm going to keep it the way it is, but I might change it later on to just int or something a little bit more um, understandable when you're trying to put in a number here. All right, let's see if this still compiles or builds. Okay, good. All right, so this is kind of bugging me a little bit, so I'm going to take that out. So the channel select is zero. We have initialize and we have channel select. Let's rebuild it just to make sure everything is still okay. Hmm, that was weird. Okay, looks like it worked. So I'm gonna go ahead and flash it now. You can see that I'm using the same, the same components using the potentiometer to um, provide a voltage onto the pin number 15. So everything should be the same as before. I'm going to plug it in and I'll flash the microcontroller. All right, looks like we have something on the, on the display. Let's see if I can get a better shot of this. Okay. That's better. Okay. So we have a potentiometer and it doesn't look like it's changing. Hmm. Which, I wonder which channel I actually used. Did I use channel zero? Let's try channel one. Maybe I used, I think I used channel one. Yeah. Let's do another build and flash. All right. looks like it's a little more stable. Let's see. Yep. Okay. That's the one. 
I'm turning the micro um, I'm turning the potentiometer so we are getting a, a change of numbers there okay so now we have the ADC in a very convenient little package up here in a .h file so we don't really need to see that uh, code anymore all we need to do is initialize it select the channel and then read what the contents is on the ADC. I wanted to do this now because um, I'm going to be doing a little bit of playing around on the the timers and I wanted to use the ADC as a way to provide input to change a PWM or even to take a look at the voltage coming out of a PWM just to play around with those those types of things to see what, what kind of outcomes we get from that type of experimentation. So hope this helps. Thank you for watching.